Now, when you ask what does it take in a business context for people to start to discern non-obvious areas of leverage, the answer is a very deep and persistent commitment to real learning. And there's a couple of features of this kind of deep commitment to learning. One is I have to be prepared to be wrong. Again, if, if it was pretty obvious what needed to be done, we'd already be doing it. So I'm part of the problem, almost for sure. My own way of seeing things, my own sense of where there's leverage is probably part of the problem. This is the domain we've always called mental models. If I'm not prepared to challenge my own mental models, the likelihood of finding non-obvious areas of high leverage is very low. Secondly, you need to really triangulate. You need to get different people from different points of view who are seeing different parts of the system to come together and collectively start to see something that individually none of them see. And thirdly, you, you need to be prepared that when you do start to see an area of relatively high leverage, it may take some time to, uh, to develop, adopt, and apply really alternative behaviors and approaches. It may be years before a relatively higher leverage approach really bears fruit. Intelligence is always about systems. It's one of the reasons we don't really even need terms like systems thinking. You can say, well, show me an example where people have acted really intelligently. Mm -hmm. And almost always the examples will have to do with balancing the short term and the long term. They'll have to do with, with some ability to forego um, short term uh, benefits in the sake of investing in something in the long term. Uh, they're not just uh, about uh, opportunism and getting the most we can in the shortest period of time. Almost never will people give examples like that. They'll say, oh yeah, I was part of a team that was, there was real collective intelligence in that team. That's the other thing to me that's very important about the notion of intelligence or smart in a social context. We, we all probably spend too much time thinking about smart individuals. It's one of the problems with school. You know, it's very individualistic very much about the smart kid and the dumb kids, okay? Uh, that's not the kind of smartness we need. The smartness we need is collective. We need cities that work differently. We need, you know, industrial sectors that work differently. Uh, we need value chains and supply chains that are managed from, from the beginning to the end to really produce social, ecological, and economic well-being. That's the concept of intelligence we need, and it will never be achieved by a handful of smart individuals. It's not about the smartest guys in the room. It's about what we can do collectively. So the intelligence that matters is going to be collective intelligence. And that's the concept of SMART that I think will really tell the tale.